Hey guys, welcome back. So we are finally moving into our seed room. We started getting some of the tables in here. We're going to bring the shelf in here and then we're going to start all of our seeds. I'm going to take you along on this process. So let's get moving. We're moving these shelves back in here, but the problem we have is the corners. The bottom down here are really sharp and I don't like the way they sit on the floor and I don't want to scratch them. So one of the things we picked up are these little pads or caster cups. They've got a carpet bottom. They should sit on the bottom of these shelves real nicely, keep them level and allow them to slide around without causing damage to the floor. We're trying out some new grow lights, but we want to make sure we have some of the same old stuff that works. And we know that these shop lights with an LED grow light work really well. So I got two more of those. That'll bring our total count to six. I also thought this was unique and I picked it up on sale. It's an LED linkable grow light string. Uh, it's got three main bulbs on it and they've got little hooks that you can hang them up on either wire racks or ropes or pulleys. The next Gorilla is completely different than the other ones I've got. I got this this past summer from Wackamy just to try out, and I'm very curious on how it's actually gonna work compared to what I've used in the past. Now it comes with a thermometer and humidity gauge, and this is a little bit different because it's one box system. It's got an internal fan to keep everything running and cool. It has a on-off switch for both vegetation and bloom. It even has several different ways in which to hang it. You can hang it from the ceiling with the pulley system that it came with, or it has a fixed wired hanging system. I'm not 100% certain on how well this is gonna work, but I wanna try using this for the first set of seeds I'll be growing. The next set of grow lights I actually used growing most of my seeds last year. They're nice because they have four extension arms with a light bulb on each one, and you can bend them and mold them into whatever shape you need to cover the most area. They also have their own timer on it, so you can set for four, six, or eight hours, which is real nice, so I don't actually have to set these up to a timer. I can just put these right directly into a wall socket. Now, I didn't have this last year, especially when this room was as cold as it was when I was starting seedlings, but I picked up these seedling heat mats. Now, I did seal up the room, so we shouldn't have the issue that we had last year, but just in case, this should keep these seedlings nice and warm and hopefully foster some good growth. Now for our seed trays. We had these last year and they worked really well. It's nice because they come with this little fork to help get the seedlings out and transplant them and this little gauge to help know the depth of the seedlings or how deep you want to plant your seeds. And then you can see that the tray comes with a base tray and then your seedling tray which, in which you plant into and the plastic lid or the cover that actually turns this into like a terrarium and holds in the moisture and helps foster good growth. I'm using the same timer as last year and it's really nice. It's got a digital system on it so it can turn on and off on very specific times, but it also has a separate section that's completely on, which is very beneficial when you're using an LED light that already has a built-in timer. I like this timer system so much, I think I'm gonna get another one. Next up is our seed storage area. This actually used to hold spices in our kitchen, but we converted it over. It's really nice because not only does it hold a seed packet really nicely, but it also is able to be alphabetized. So then I can create a little bit of organization. All right guys, so the room is set up, so we're ready to start planting seeds. You can see that the storage container I have for our seeds, everything is alphabetized. But what I have are these spreadsheets. I have a spreadsheet set up so I know when to, what I have, so my inventory, and then also when to plant it, how far to plant it, uh, how, how deep to plant it, where to sow it to, or how far to thin it, and then about when the maturity date is gonna be. So I'm gonna start setting up a calendar for myself. So when I start going into this and having a garden the size of what we're going to have, I have some sort of a schedule for myself. Now, based on that, we are about eight and a half weeks from our frost date, which I put someplace between 21st and 31st of uh, May. So we want to try to get everything set up for our eight week plants. And right now we have some tomatoes, we have our poblano peppers, our sweet peppers, and I believe our eggplants that we want to get planted. We're gonna get those into our containers and we're gonna get those under some grow lights uh, right away this week. Then our next batch will be at about the six week marker, which is about 
uh, I think it's gonna be April 10th that week. So that week we'll be doing our next set of planting and getting that under grow lights as well. The idea is this succession should be able to have plants all at a good size to put out into the garden when it's time to go. And then we'll, we'll start doing some succession planting. So things that I know that will be mid-summer, I will try to figure out the best time for that, for planting and se or starting seeds. So we'll probably start some seeds about mid-summer inside and then move them out. But we also have a lot of seeds that are direct sow. So once those are ready, once the garden is set up and once it's warm enough, we'll just sow that stuff directly either into the ground, around the garden, in the garden, or some of the areas, the planter areas that we have around the house. So we got a lot of work today, so we're gonna get started. Now for our soil for the seeds, we're gonna be using Burpee's Organic Seed Starting Mix. We're gonna add water, try to get everything nice and moist so it's easy to compact into the little seedling squares. Once all the soil is added to the seed trays and packed in, we're going to add those trays to their base trays. Now in this case, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be planting using, this is my measuring tool. It's got a marking for a quarter inch all the way down here. And that's what each one of these is. It's going to be a quarter inch for the eggplant, the sweet peppers, and the poblano peppers. Now I should say that with the poblano peppers, which I'll be planting first, these actually I got from a farmer's market. And we like the peppers so much, I decided to harvest the seeds from it, dried them out, and now we're going to try to plant these and grow them ourselves. First up are the poblano peppers. Next we're going to do the sweet peppers. <music> Lastly, the black beauty eggplant. I'm only going to do two rows of these. Now for the next grouping, the sweet 100s only require an eighth of an inch deep uh, hole. So we'll be doing three tomato, three each of the tomatoes and two of the kale. So we'll start with the smallest ones over here and do the sweet 100s on this side. So we're gonna do all of our holes and then start filling them in. Our first set of tomatoes on this are going to be our sweet 100s. We really like the flavor of these. They're really nice as a snack, but I ran out as I was planting, so I had to open up another packet and switch brands over to Burpee. The next set of tomatoes we'll be growing are the Celebration Hybrid Tomatoes. They tout themselves as being a little bit more disease resistant and a little bit hardier. The last thing we'll be planting is our first wave of kale. Specifically, this is the blue scotch curled kale. The last thing we're gonna do is add vermiculite to it. It's gonna actually help keep the moisture and keep all of the nutrients and everything inside the soil. Now we're gonna add water, but we don't have to completely saturate it because we added water to the soil prior to planting the seeds.
All right, guys, so our first set of seeds is in with our new grow light on top. I'll keep you updated on how that's going. And then we have another set of seeds going in in about two weeks and another set four weeks. So we do have a lot of work ahead of us. We do have a lot of seeds. They will be filling these shelves, especially once they start growing past the point where these seed trays are usable. Then we'll transfer them over to a little a larger pot, whether it's a four inch or six inch. We'll start that process. And then we. what's nice is these shelves actually move up and down so we can actually make this a lot bigger in uh, different areas so we can house all of these plants so we do have a lot of work ahead of us we do have a lot of exciting things happening this room was one of the biggest projects that we had of the year so far we're really excited about it now I've got a set space where I can do all of this stuff and it's gonna be a lot easier to clean with the hardwood floors there is still more to do in this room we're not completely done so stay tuned for that we still have a lot more to come Thanks guys for stopping in, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.